Cigarette smoking's down, but tobacco companies are looking for new ways to sell their products. One response to that is a plan by Mayor Walsh to put new restrictions on the sale of those products to young people. To tell us about the proposal is our guest from the Boston Public Health Commission, the director of the Division of Healthy Homes and Community Supports, Margaret Reed. Uh, thank you very much for being with us, Margaret. Thank you, Chris. I'm so uh, pleased that you invited us to talk about these proposed regulations. Um, tobacco is still the leading cause of preventable death and disease in the United States. And the harm starts the minute you take your first puff. Um, and it's physically addictive. So regulations to prevent youth from starting to uh, use these products and get addicted are so important because as any smoker knows, once you start, it's really, really hard to stop. Um, well, one of the interesting questions I had when I heard that this was, uh, at least in terms of the age change here, this is uh, instead of having the cap at 18, it goes up to 21. Is this really about people who are you know, 19 and 20 years old, or is it because we're concerned with the trickle-down effect to the 14 and 15-year-olds? Both of those points are really important. Um, in fact, um, you can make a big statistical difference in the amount of people that are going to start uh, smoking, of like a 15% decrease in the people that'll start smoking by increasing the age to 21. Um, but the other thing is 21-year-olds tend not to be in social networks with high school students. Um, the Institutes of Medicine actually looked at the benefits. They looked at the benefit of increasing to 19 and increasing to 21. And one of the concerns they had is age 19, that effect of buying cigarettes and giving them to younger um, teenagers was actually more of an issue. But even between 19 and 21, there's a big difference in the amount of people that won't start smoking, won't get addicted, and won't ultimately die of tobacco-related disease. What about the enforcement about this? Right. So these are um, uh, expansions or adaptions of existing regulations. At the Health Commission, um, we have a very comprehensive tobacco prevention and control program. We permit, at any one time, there's probably about 950 retailers that are permitted to um, sell tobacco and nicotine products. and. Um, so we already do uh, permitting, uh, retailer education, compliance checks. Uh, so this is just, we already have the infrastructure. It's just changing um, the age that we will be uh, doing compliance checks for. And the other uh, big uh, change um, or expansion, you could say, is that we will be taking flavored products out of these retailers and limiting them to just um, what's called adult-only establishments, smoking bars and tobacco uh, retail establishments. And so not, not a convenience store, uh, essentially. Uh, why are those flavored products such a concern? Right. Um, the government has actually done a great job of reducing the rate that youth smoke cigarettes. In Boston, like only about 6% of our high school students report that they smoke cigarettes. The way that's happened is we've made them incredibly expensive and we don't allow flavors other than menthol. Now, cost to young adults and teenagers is very important and flavor is very important because when you're starting to smoke, you don't actually like the taste of tobacco. So if you've got bubblegum flavor or grape or chocolate, it's much more attractive. So um, none of these packaging or, um, or flavor restrictions um, affect like low cost cigars. You can buy cigars in Massachusetts for 60 cents um, and they can be bubblegum. Um, so that's what kids are smoking. So that's what we have to get, um, make not available. There are also more people uh, using uh, smokeless tobacco, e-cigarettes. E-cigarettes uh, for the most part, yes. Why is that something you're looking at? Well, again, e-cigarettes um, contain nicotine, so they're addictive. They contain many of the constituents uh, that we don't think are safe within cig cigarettes. They also tend to really come in flavor, and they're affordable. So again, um, you've got a youth market. In Boston, we saw over two years the use, the reported use double among teenagers, and that's a national phenomena. So, and then they're very, um, 
they're under-researched um, and under-regulated. They may very well be helpful for an adult uh, that's addicted to nicotine to help them not smoke tobacco, but there's no reason a teenager should have access to these products. What about uh, the influence of advertising? Uh, I know there were campaigns in past years to try to tone that down at least. Uh, yeah. uh, do you still have to look at that? Yeah. Again, if you, um, we are seeing very targeted marketing, very sophisticated marketing by the tobacco industry. They're, they're really smart and a little hard to keep up with. So you see with the cigars, um, you know, they're, they're written into like rap music and hip hop music. They're in um, media that's very much targeted to youth. Um, and now the nicotine products like the e-cigarettes are being marketed um, partly as a safer alternative, but again, they're not a safer alternative to someone that doesn't smoke and shouldn't be smoking. <laughs> but, no, no, that's an interesting qualifier because, because the, the people who defend e-cigarettes saying, you know, you know uh, we are to real cigarettes as methadone is to heroin, so at least one's better than the other. Well, methadone is a uh, highly uh, researched and highly regulated uh, prescription medicine and you know the research around these nicotine products is just starting um, and it'll be you know it's really important for us to find out if these have value as a risk reduction strategy for someone who's addicted to nicotine but again these regulations are targeted at youth and um, so there's no reason for any youth to be smoking blueberry flavored e-cigarettes. <laughs> they could probably use a little more money for writing the tea as well. By the way, people would like some more details on these proposed regulations. Any place they can check that out? Um, yes. You can make public comment through December 9th, and that's the easiest way to do it is through Board of Health at bprhc.org. Um, and uh, on December 3rd from 5 to 7, we're having a public hearing at 1010 Massachusetts Avenue in Boston, Mass. Thank you very much yeah. for being with us. Great. From the Boston Public Health Commission, Margaret Great. Reed. Thank you so much. In a moment, a survey of local residents on the future of East Boston.